What's up, guys? This is Patrick Jensen uh, here for another uh, broadcast. Um, we're going to be doing some environment concept art today, and um, this time's going to be a little different because uh, we're going to use uh, a lot of photos and do some photo bashing um, and just try to create some cool worlds and just have some fun. So, um, a lot of the videos in the past have been just straight up painting, uh, which I sure enjoy doing and uh, creating different color palettes and moods and stuff. So um, if you're a first timer checking out these videos, check out those other ones if you're interested in just how to sketch something from scratch. Um, but this one's gonna be starting um, with a photo base and kind of going from there and stuff. So um, something a little different for you guys. So I'm gonna switch it up. Um, but yeah, we might as well go ahead and, and get started. Um, if you missed this, you can watch it later on YouTube. Um, and uh, I'll be posting those links later for you guys. But uh, let's just go ahead and get started. And then we can have some fun. But uh, we're live on Twitch. And if I answer any questions, I'll be sure to give a shout out to you guys. Um, uh, so if you're watching this later, you'll know what the question was and, and stuff in the chat. But um, um, yeah. So let's do some, some fun world exploring and stuff. All right, here we go. So I, was, I thought it'd be cool to do a, a mountainscape. Um, I love uh, the Alps specifically for mountain reference, especially epic mountain reference. Um, so I was uh, just putting in the Alps here and trying to get some inspiration. Uh, so we'll just uh, go ahead and pick one of these guys to get going. And so you'll see kind of uh, what the process is for some of this. Um, we'll just save this in the ref folder. Cool. This is very similar to what I might do if I was working on a vista or kind of um, doing some concepts for an establishing shot or something like that. So um, you'll see that whole process from start to finish and um, get an idea of how to do something like this. Of course, there's many ways, of course. Man, that's cool. There's so many ways to do all this stuff. Um, this is just one way I like to work. And you'll see how that kind of pans out. So we're just gonna find some ref and get going. Let's see, pretty cool. You know what's fun too? Ooh, pretty fun. Okay, we might need something like that for later. This one too. Nice trees. We'll get a couple images here to get started, and then, and then we'll start having some fun in Photoshop. Cool. Should be good to go. All right, let's do this. Um, so something I like to do, you get all of them, bring them all in, and if you hold down Control Alt minus, um, you can zoom out and it makes a little window of these guys at the same time so you don't have to resize the window you can just quickly zoom out and get these guys down here you know we'll need the trees later for like the foreground but we'll have them over here for later okay cool all right got a couple of viewers hey guys if you want to say hello in the chat feel free ask any questions or say hey and stuff um Ah, we'll start. We'll start small. Maybe well, we'll go up a little bit. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, let's get some color in there to start, and we'll just go from there. It'd be cool to 
mess with the palette too. So maybe we'll go purple or something with uh, with this one. Make something unique that's not in in these guys, but a little otherworldly. And uh, see what we can make. Hey, Moxie Socks. How you doing today? All right. And this guy is really fun, especially the lighting and stuff. So let's get that and bring that in. All right. I don't have anything in mind other than making a fun, cool image. Um, this is me just exploring shapes and world building. So that's kind of how we're going to treat this. Um, when I bring in a photo, sometimes I do first the levels to just make sure my blacks aren't too black. So I have some area to work in. Um, this I would adjust if I'm bringing it down. I'll bring it down just a little bit. Then I get the mid value kind of where I want it. And then I'll do a color balance and get that into that purple realm, kind of matching what I'm starting to establish behind it, you know? Do the highlights a little bit, rock that a little bit, and get something kind of fun like that. So that's before and after. So it's real subtle, but because this photo had a good good range and stuff. Um, but you can see, now I'm just going to kind of get some of this vanishing away. And we'll go from there. Okay. I'll just paint a little bit. See if we can not come up with something fun back here. might do this canvas will change and the composition will change as we go um, so I'm just kind of playing right now atmosphere back there. Cool. So just roughing in a little sky, getting some directional clouds coming in, swooping, swooping in. It would be cool if I'm gonna just punch this a little bit more and see where we go with it. Okay, I got an idea. some of this guy. So 
something like this. So first I'll get those blacks in the right place with the levels and kind of bounce it around a little bit. Make sure it's good. Actually, it's a little too hot in the, in the snow. It's a little blown out. Let's bring that down. And do a little color balance. Get the purples in the right place. There we go. Highlights. I'm gonna hit them a little bit more. Get some yellows in there, little shadows. There we go. Awesome. Before, after, it just kind of nestles in there a little bit more. Fog out some of that stuff. And what's cool is if you, if you get close like that, you can also make a mask for that layer, right? You can invert, invert the mask and then paint it back where you want it. And because you've already done the, the color tweaks to kind of get it closer, um, you can just put it where you want, like that. And you're adding that guy in with the mask. And um, sometimes you'll need a little bit more adjustment on it. Maybe not. Maybe it's good. Good enough. Good enough, as they say. Cool. All right. Keep going. All right. Like the yeah. Okay, so we'll establish the light coming from the the screen right and or the right side of the image. So the snow will be kind of lit like that. Cool. I'm getting probably too detailed, but um, for now, because we're kind of doing shape exploration and stuff, but it's good to get it a little closer so that what you're doing is um, it's easier to see where it could go, you know, because you have one area kind of fleshed out a little bit. So, all right, we'll keep going. All right, so what is down here? So this is getting a little cramped, so I'm gonna bring it out a little bit. Kinda of wanna do it like this. And then see the sunset over here. Some, uh, one thing fun to do is uh, dupe everything like this, so it's on a layer and Control click that little thumbnail right there that selects the transparency of it. And then you can do select uh, inverse or shift control I, grabs the rest, and then just do an edit fill content aware. And it's a real fast way to just <laughs> finish out the canvas like that. So then you can keep going. When you're doing sketches like this, it's very handy for when you re recompose the image to just get it, get it bigger. And go from there. All right, so let's get a bloom going on. Um, maybe we'll just uh, not like that. No, 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 too much. And I know it's behind that layer, but I'm okay with that because we can erase these clouds a little bit. All right. Cool. Yep, 
And uh, let's get some cool foreground stuff going on. What do you think? And we could do, you know what would be fun? Um, let's get some cool sci-fi stuff in here, like a factory, maybe a power plant. I'll show you what we could do. Um, I want to do from the air. Ooh. Um, oh, wait. wait. I'll show you something. Let's see, where's something? Ooh, this is good. Sure. Let's try it. Save image ref. Um, is that that one? Cool. And let's paste that. Cool. And we're just going to mess with this thing. See if we can't get something fun. Oh, nice. There we go. I'm just looking for something to get get this foreground going. Ooh, a little too much. What if I desaturate that? Cool. If you control shift F, you can fade that desaturation. Get something like this. Let's invert that. And then maybe I'll paint something. Down here, okay. And actually, um, I'm gonna bring it in again. And let's just uh, let's tweak the colors on this guy. So I'm gonna bring it into that purple, or find it find a good place for it. Maybe in the reds even. And we need to adjust the uh, the darks. I want a little more contrast in it. There we go. If we bring it down a little bit, then we can actually hit it with some light on top and, and not have it be so hot everywhere. Um, but I'm still going to put a mask on that and invert the mask and then get something going on. So again, I'm just kind of trying to get something, a grid down here that we can we can make some fun stuff. Like a little landing pad or something. You'll see. It'll make sense. Momentarily. A lot of this is kind of just playing around, too. There's no real science to it other than you have a set of tricks. Not tricks, but you know, you know what Photoshop can do with different layer modes and things. And then it's just about trying out those different layer modes and seeing seeing what works. Because when you're doing work that does involve photos or actually any work in general on Photoshop. Painting is just as important as making a different layer mode or using um, a different uh, adjustment or even using filters and stuff. Consider all that to be in your little uh, tool, tool house, stuff you can do. Now I'm going to do, let's get some Okay, we need to get some cool shapes here. So let's see. Okay, I'm just going to bring up some of these buildings. As if there's a little city at the base of these, this mountain here. And you know what? Let's just rough in a little tree line. Um, kind of like what's going on in this one. See how you have these big uh, trees in the front that are not getting a lot of light. And so what we could do is let's do um, let's make a group. And we'll do mist. I'm going to make another group and call this foreground or FG. Okay. So what the mist is for is we can 
bits of mist here. And actually, I'm going to bring that down. Cool. Something like that. That's nice. And then the foreground, we can paint some of those trees real quick. And we'll rough them in, and then we can replace them with photos if we want to. But I'm just trying to find an image that is going to work for what we're doing. There we go. Cool. And what's fun is I do ha I do like how there's this little snowy slope right here. And we can eventually put a character on there for scale to show how big this is. So let's go ahead and get some of that on here. Um, I don't want it all to be in light, so I'm gonna get some of that cooler color and get this little slope in here. Nice. Yeah, I guess we could get some shadows from the trees, maybe. Or we just, yeah, it's fine for now. <laughs> We're just playing. Speaking of which, let's uh, save this guy. Just in cases. All right. At this point, okay, we got our mist, which is helping out these trees in the foreground. Um, we got the foreground, hill, and trees. Cool. And then we got the background. Now, let's go ahead and make a folder and we'll do BG. Okay. And we'll put all this in there. That sounds good. So we got the background. Um, that'll be handy for later. Uh, if we break out the sky, you'll want that on a separate one, and you can do stuff like that. So um, I'm just going to do some adjustments real quick and get these mountains into a better place. And then we'll keep going. Now I like the contrast, but it is way too saturated. So actually, I'm going to just invert that mask and bring it back just a little bit here in the mountains. Cool. And in the city. All right, too much, but that's okay. And let's just do a quick saturation check. Just bring it down a little bit so we have more places to go with it. Cool. Something I forget to do. Okay, let's uh, let's see about um, getting something else in here. Uh, you know what? By night. Oh man, here we go. Ooh. It's 8,000 wide. Take a moment. It's cool though. Let's see what else we got. Um, oh man, that's wicked. Just looking for inspiration here before we continue. And what we got. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. That's pretty awesome. We're not going to do a straight rip, but check that out. That's kind of similar to what we're doing back here. Now, you get that in there, and what's cool is it's very close to the <laughs> it's, this is very close to the same color palette and lighting and everything. So we don't have to do much to that. That's pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to get it kind of in the, the right place there. What I might do, let's see. I'll just grab this stuff. I'm going to cut that out and paste it. And then actually I'll flip it. Let's see if that gives us a better... Yeah. Oh, nice bring up the perspective a little bit because we have a different perspective than that image. Maybe. That's a good, yeah. Yeah, we go even higher. Cool. And we can play with that little, the, the, we can add more of those guys, you know. Um, 
don't know if you guys play Destiny and just go to the tower and look out at the city. You see all the all the streets going out, and so we can we can make something like that, which would be fun. All right, so these guys, um, uh, the mist is getting in the way from this guy, so we'll pull the mist down a little bit, and then that photo, those two, we can actually just group that, put a mask on it, invert the mask, and then paint it back where you want it. Okay, so let's get some of that in there. And it's actually better than what I was I was doing on my stuff, but we can we can use that. The sky's in the way, so we'll just uh, paint with black. Get rid of some of this, but the haze is a good idea. Um, so we're gonna actually get this in there, and then what we'll do is make a haze la layer behind the city, and really make that pop. That makes sense. You'll see. But this is going to be good to, to get us going. That is awesome photo. Okay. I want more of that. Okay, cool. That's without that thing, with it. Now I like I like this level of lighting, so we'll get that in there now. Let's see. Just kind of put a levels on it and bump this up. I'm just focusing right here. That's nice. Invert that. And then I can paint that where I want it. See? I can hit these buildings a little bit more where I want that. Get that city to glow a little bit more. Nice. That makes sense. Uh-huh. Cool. Now a lot of finessing comes later when you're trying to balance the blacks as they go back in distance and stuff and um, things like that. So we'll do a little finishing pass. But okay, we got that levels there. Now the city, let's put a fog behind it and we're going to use some of this. And that color right there. We're going to just go behind this. Make a little bit of a fog back here. Nice. Just go real subtle with it. Okay, we're gonna make more mountains back there too. Cause it's uh and just bloom that out. Nestling in there. All right. Okay. So now, um, what I'm going to do is take this stuff, put it up, call this city. Oops. Cool. All right. So the BG is that. The city is that. And then we have our mist and the foreground. Okay, so it's starting to get a little more organized. <laughs> cool, all right, let's see what we got. This is pretty awesome. And the lighting's coming from the right. Let's get some of this in there. Help out the right side of our image. It's good stuff too. And we're in the BG group. Perfect. All right. So now it's not in the right color space, right? So, but the values are pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and do, let's just first start with the saturation. Let's bring it down just a little bit. Cool. And adjust that color, color balance. And look at that. All we have to do is kind of tweak the mid. That's getting into a, a good place there. Highlights, we good with that? I might bump that out. Yeah, I'll do that separately. Cool, that's awesome. Didn't have to do much. Put a mask on it. I'm going to invert that mask. 
grab a brush, paint with white where I want it to be. We're going to just get this guy in here. And actually, we have that fuzzy... Ah, uh, remember our, uh, that mist layer? We can just put it behind it. And so it's kind of looking real nice back there now. With this stuff, you got to be open to happy, happy accidents and stuff. So now I'm just looking for some neat formations. Make this kind of fun. You could match the photo, or you could do what the photo's doing, but this is this is another way to do it too. I like this guy. He's pretty cool. Levels. Punch that guy up a little more. Nice. Sure. Uh huh. Okay. All right. The city. I'm just gonna jump around a little bit and get this in a better place. Oh, you know what? Now that I'm organized with that mist layer behind it, I have to be careful. Well, if I want to maintain that organization. So we're going to do, could do that, or what am I going to do? Maybe I'll do this. Okay, we're going to make a temporary layer that's just opaque like that. See right here? I just filled it with this color. And so on the city, um, I'm going to merge everything. And I'm just testing out something real quick. Yeah, that's a good good thing. Um, okay, we'll put that back on, get rid of those guys. Duplicate. We have our city. Nice. And let's clean this up. Eraser hard. Okay. Cool. So now we'll make this layer, finish it out, make it fun. Actually, you know what? Let's squash this brush. Get a couple building tops and things. better now. Okay, cool. All right, turn that layer. Nice. And you know what? Oh yeah. Just 
thinking. Should we go wider? Let's go wider. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, wait, here. Um, there we go. Let's actually get a sunset. Okay. Um, cloudy sunset. You never know. Ooh. Get something in there quickly. I could, I could paint it, but uh, we're trying to use use more photos, and it's a lot quicker to start with photos, of course. So we're just seeing, seeing what uh, what looks appropriate for this image. Oh wait, it's all right. One second. It's low res, but that's pretty awesome. We're gonna put this here for inspiration later, okay? Because I kind of want that back here. Um, but let's go back to the top. We'll just grab one of these for now. Um, could get moody with it. See how that works. PG. Paste. Let's flip that. And overlay. Sometimes a uh, layer mode will is all you need, you know. Um, but uh, just to get some texture in there. Maybe I'll just adjust this guy. Eh, I'll just do soft overlay for now. Cool. Uh, we got a question. Why did you put empty clipping mask above the levels? Um, oh, you know why? Uh, that would be down here, right? Um, if I'm gonna work on a layer, like uh, here, let's get rid of the sky. This layer, our city, right? Um, if I wanna do a layer that's clipped to that, or maybe, you know, uh, a hue saturation. If I do a um, layer adjustment like this, it makes it above it, but it adjusts everything, right? Um, so if I do that and then clip it, um, it's just an extra step. Versus if I'm gonna do a couple things to a layer, I'll go ahead and make a new layer, clip it, and this is like my bookend, or like, uh, because if I click this layer and make an adjustment, Anything I do is instantly clipped to him because there's that empty layer that's clipped to, clipped to it. So if I make a new layer, make a new adjustment layer, everything gets kind of booked under that uh, without me thinking about it, which is nice. Does that make sense? Let me know if that doesn't make sense. Because then I can do this and it instantly adjusts it without me doing Control-Alt-G um, to clip. So, and I have a shortcut that, you know, if you have a layer uh, selected like this. I have a shortcut F5. I made it which makes a layer that's clipped to the one below it um, So that's a quick way to make that kind of border or buffer Thing so then I could just click that layer and, and do whatever I want to it So hopefully that answers your question All right, we've an overlay but let me know and I can go through it oh there we go all right let's get some of that cloud action nice and you know what we could try some of this even though it's super low res it doesn't matter because we're gonna be gelling it all together Actually, it's pretty close. What I might do is just do a color balance on it and get it into a better, happier place. Uh, 
Uh, let's do a levels on it. Nice. Cool. And we'll just erase it where we don't want it. Left. Oh. Buzz. And let's just do one more adjustment over everything. There we go. Somewhere in there. Invert that and then paint it back where I want it, which is right around there. Cool. Now the city. Um, and that uh, buffer layer that I was telling you about, buffer, border layer, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, feel free to quickly use it for something if you want. Um, you can always make another if you if you need to. So it comes in handy when you just want to quickly get something in there. So right now I'm doing a hard light layer on the city to just hit this a little bit with some of that light. Now I'm noticing um, it'd be cool to darken some of the uh, mountain back there. Um, so let's do curves, maybe. Let's see about that. Oh, there we go. And red. No, you know what? Let's get the green. Drag that down. Get the blue. There we go. And this guy. That's nice. And we'll invert that. Okay, cool. So here it is affecting everything, which is nice, um, but I only want it on these mountains here as we get higher. Yeah. So I'm just going to paint it there. I'm painting into the mask. Yeah, let's darken that. That sounds good. And it's getting a little saturated back there, but that's okay. All right, you know, and sometimes you just got to paint over everything and we're going to get to that point um, to kind of bring it all together. So we'll do that at the end. Actually, probably very soon because it'd be fun to move on to a different one, you know, but uh, we're having a good time. I'm having a good time. Hope you guys are too. Um, actually, if I just clip it, there you go. See, I'm just getting some texture into these foreground guys. I'm just going to do something crazy, which is make a group named Paint Over, and we're just going to go nuts on this thing for a little bit. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to make a new layer because I'm going to be zooming in and out. We're going to put this right here. All right. So you can see the zoomed out version. And then I'll be uh, going like this a lot so you won't get crazy or dizzy. <laughs> but uh, this way I can just quickly not worry about layers. I've got enough in there to make a fun image or elements, I guess, that I wanted and stuff. So now we're just going to go fast and see where this goes, okay? Changing brushes a lot. And figuring 
this guy out. Think about lighting, silhouette, shape, all that to bring this home. And well, I could dupe it all so I get my layer effects, but that's okay. We will just wing it. I want hotter. There we go. Get that nice rake again. Finish this out. Um, Uh, sure, no problem. Uh, someone was asking about the uh, clipping mask again. So, um, real quick, it's like a it's like a border for uh, layers below it. So if I here, I'll do this is the easiest way to explain it. Let's do a square, right? And if I fill that, okay, there we go. So you have this square. It's on this layer like that. If I make a new layer and I clip it to the one below it, which is Control Alt G, okay, this is an empty layer that's clipped to the one below it. So now if I'm painting on that square layer like this and I want to do an adjustment to this, I can do an adjustment like levels and, and tweak it and it makes that levels right here and it's actually clipped to the one below it because there's that l layer above it that's already clipped to it. Um, so it's real handy. If you don't have that, you get rid of these. Um, and you do a levels adjustment. It's going to be affecting the whole image, not the one below it, unless you clip it and then do the adjustment. It's just a visual cue to know that uh, it's just habit for me. You don't have to do it. It's just a way of quickly adding layers underneath it without clipping each one or you know that kind of thing. So hopefully that makes sense. Did I answer your question. getting going here. Focusing on this mist area right here. I want it a little more contrasted so we can uh, Let's get some cool light. So this is a hard light layer, and I'm just creating some more colored atmosphere back here. Mm. 
Oops. And if we set our brush to color dodge, you're welcome. We can get some cool streaks and stuff. Cool. It's looking good. Um, let's see. And I'm going to see about um, I need something like uh, you'll see. I need some texture. This might do it. Sure, let's try that. We'll just copy it. Paste it in here. And I'm gonna flip it. Way too big. Oh, that's another thing. I am working a little low res. Um, if you were really wanting to do this, you, you might wanna go higher res than what I'm doing. This is only 1920 wide, I think, right? Uh, oh no, we got up to 3,000 with the cropping and stuff, so it did get a little bigger. Um, but anyway, um, look at that. So changing this to soft light, I'm just getting nice texture in here. Um, put a mask on that, invert it, and we'll just paint it where we want it. See? And it's a little blue, but we can just uh, let's just go ahead and adjust that layer, and we'll just redden up a little bit. There we go. Cool. Levels. I'm focusing right here, so that when I invert that and then paint it back. It's doing what I want in that area. Cool. Let's work on the foreground a little bit. So we got some nice stuff kind of indicated here. That's uh, just kind of A little bit of a dead space here. Let's see if we can't get this 
looking a little nicer. Sometimes you get lucky for googling exactly what you want. <laughs> I need trees against the sky and so I typed in tree sky and I'm just seeing what we get. Um, and that looks like kind of what I want. Let's try it. Copy paste and we'll get this in here. Let's flip it. Cool, I just want something over here. All right, and then what we could do, let's do, go to channels. I'm just trying something. Um, grab the blue channel. What if we make a mask on that guy, but invert it. And then we can mess with the levels on that mask because it's pretty monochromatic. Nice. Pretty good. Now see how it's got a little bit of a, a blue edge? Well, it's cool. You can just uh, make a new layer that's clipped to that one and we'll fill it with that black. And it's pretty close. Um, next thing I would do is make another layer clip to it um, and set it to like hard light and bloom it out just a touch where it's in front of the sky. Yeah, looks pretty good. Actually, since we have some of that, that real texture in there, um, we can get another brush, get some thicker ones, and I'm just painting some more strokes in there, kind of thicken these guys up. And we can add some more. Here and there. And I think we need some more definition on this guy. Cool. Nice. A little sun hit on the snow here. There's a little drop off, something. It's 105 here. So we spent about an hour on this guy. It's pretty good. We might wrap it up on this one pretty soon. We'll do some last little finishing touches to bring this one home. Oh, thank you. Someone likes the way you incorporate uh, real images. Yeah, it, de it definitely helps like get things going uh, faster, you know. Um, 
it would be good to do a thumbnail beforehand or you know not go this detailed on certain things if it's just a sketch a compositional sketch um, when you're doing these you can focus priority on making a cool image or designing a cool city and when I say cool um, this is mainly for personal work um, when you're working on a project you would you would really want to define what you need to make for uh, the client or for the other department that you're you're working towards so um, uh, this is uh, since this is a personal piece um, I'm just trying to have fun and show you guys something new and and uh, maybe inspire you to try a different technique in your own work professional or personal but um, making it fun and cool is definitely important regardless but anyway um, I've been I'm just focusing on making a fun image here and so using photos as a base so yeah I'm glad you liked it glad you like it all right we're just finishing off this side here and now I'm gonna select everything copy everything paste everything and we'll do a last couple of adjustments and stuff just to see you know what I want to see what happens when we do a gradient map on this guy if it works out I'll explain it but uh, I'm just gonna play around a little bit setting this to different someone asked uh, um, would you use the same reference technique for a painting that had a more cartoony or stylized look um, you totally could um, it would just be a matter of kind of either filtering the photos or um, painting on top of them to make sure that the um, the actual photo or what makes it look like a photo gets recedes in the background, and so you're you're able to see the the style of what you're doing, the cartoony style or the stylized style. Um, yeah, so um, you absolutely can um, use it for shapes to grab shapes uh, of buildings or clouds or things and get those going. Um, yeah, so. You can definitely use it as part part of your part of your uh, technique, and, or just try it out and um, see if it works. And yeah, I think we're about done with this guy. Oh, that's good. You want to look through your own photography and see what kind of textures and shapes I can get in my painting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we could have started with uh, a different mountain range or a different city or um, all that can change real quickly. And that's what's nice is you show it to somebody else or show it show it to a client and they would have feedback, uh, you know, think this isn't too, this is too big, this is too small, that kind of stuff. Um, so it's good to, it'll evolve and change depending on what you're doing it for and stuff so yeah I think I think this is good we'll stop we'll stop yeah nice little environment sketch using some of these guys as inspiration down here should we do could do another one yeah let's do another one okay Um, 
Another thing you can do too is paint on top of stuff. And let's try that. So we got this one here. Let's keep these up. Um, yeah, we'll put this here. Okay. And we're going to save this as uh, Sketch 2. Cool. All right. Is just paint on top. So we'll, we'll do that a little bit for this guy. Uh, grab a drink of water real quick. <laughs> There's a few few of you guys in the chat. Uh, where are you guys from? I always find it fun to hear where you guys are from. All right. Chicago, nice. Czech Republic, California, sweet. Awesome. Well, thanks for thanks for joining me today. Hope this is fun. Uh, you know what? Let's see. Could use this guy again. Just, uh, uh, ooh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something. Just want to show you different ways to, to use this stuff. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys like it. Um. This would be more like of a, a Skyrim type image. So we'll, we'll try something like that. And um, it's just got that mood already, right? So let's let's play with it and see if uh, we can't make something fun. Get this mountain back here. I know we used it in the last one, but that's okay. And there it is. Cool. Ah, oh, you're welcome. Trying this out real quick. There we go. Yeah, nice. That's better. Okay, let's see. Let's do. So we're just eating into these these cliffs here, making some a little more cloud formations in here. And what we could do is let's bring down the lights like this. And then up the darks. We can invert that, which we, we like to do. <laughs> and let's see, let's get some brooding stuff going on back here. Nice. And 
let's widen this thing up. Uh, not that way. I like that. Okay, remember that technique? We just copy everything, paste it, and I'll snap this back in the corner. I'm gonna control click this thumbnail, control shift I to select the inverse. Then we'll just edit fill content to wear, and then expand our canvas a little bit. Boom. I'm gonna recrop in a little bit, maybe around there. Perfect. Okay. Um, so what if Let's get this. This is where I'll slow down for a moment. Boy, painting figures fast. Is a tough one for me. I usually have to do some sketches and stuff, but um, my process is usually different. But I'm just trying to block someone in, so um, actually, so hang in there. <laughs> I was thinking it'd be cool to have a little path going down here for this guy. So it's not just like a drop off, you know. And we can go ahead and Kind of want back here too is then a fun little uh, temple, or so, uh, a temple or like a castle he's heading out to. So we're gonna clean up some space for that, and maybe put it on this ridge right here. I'll try that out. I 
actually, it's gonna hurt. Square brush. We'll just put it right here. If we grab that blue and then add a little red down the blue, and a little bit more, a little more red, less blue, we can get a warmer color, it can indicate some stone or something. But it's close to the original value, you know, or the original blue. We don't want it monochromatic, but we do want it kind of neutral because of the mood of this one. We should do this, squash our square brush a little bit. That'll be easier to. And do a little levels. Mm. There we go. Invert that bring out this tower a little bit. Cool, huh? It's kind of fun. Maybe there's a wall over here. And it's like part of the mountain here. Create a little path up to this guy. And let's do a new window for this guy. Put him down here before, like, uh, like we did before, just so you can see the zoomed out version. Nice. All right. When you're designing like paths and mountains and things like this, it's it's kind of just about replicating what's going on in the photo, or the the concepts of what's going on in the photo, like darkening towards the top of a ridge, on the shadow side like this, fading it down into the mist, and then you can pretty much kind of mold and shape these mountains however you want. It's kind of fun, and then I'm just gonna save those those bright highlights to where you want to focus your eye. So maybe I'll get this road to be a little bit more pronounced like this. 
let that go back into this guy. Yeah, that's that's fun. Kind of bringing out this stuff. With figures, it, it is fun. I one one approach I like, especially for paintings like this, is just kind of pushing the paint into the shape of uh, into the shapes I need. So, as you can see, I'm eating into a silhouette to try to find that character and what they're doing. And I was like, oh, maybe maybe he's got a walking stick. Um, trudging through the snow here. see let's try some levels on this I'm focusing right here That's kind of the vibe I want. It's nice. Let's grab that. <laughs> Are you using art pen to rotate your brush? Someone asked. Uh, yes. So I've got the regular pen and the art pen. So if you hear me switch brushes, I like the feel of the regular one. Um, it's a little bit lighter. And uh, so for doing doing uh, airbrush or just straight up painting, um, I'll use that one. But then I'll switch it out for the art brush. Um, when I'm using certain tools like this, I can just twist it and it's rotating that uh, just by twisting it. So um, it's nice having both, the option of both. Um, yeah, and then you can, 
you can do that. I highly recommend it if you enjoy uh, painting and Photoshop and getting like more brushstroke kind of uh, work. Um, so like this one, I can rotate and get either it to do like that, or I'll just I'll rotate it to get the the tops of things and stuff. So it comes in handy. Yeah. Oh, so uh, this guy. Um, we're gonna use the shape language here to kind of indi help indicate this uh, this castle back here. Um, and I'm kind of liking it. What I don't like is this kind of dead space right here. Let's fix that real quick. I think just uh, misting it out. Let's try that first. Because the photo had some. And we can uh, um, cloud. Mural. Let's just get some more clouds in there. Because we don't need this kind of space back here. Or we don't need <laughs> the eye to go over here. So I'm just going to add some more clouds. Back to that castle. Um, let's do this. So light source coming in from the, the left here. Um, Sky. Someone asked, have you ever had to use 3D for any reference or to create a piece? Uh, do you do 3D or only 2D? Uh, that's a great question. Um, sometimes I use 3D. It depends on the, the project and the, the work. Um, uh, I'll either uh, most of what I've I've done in the past is um, using 3D to um, do camera projections or layers um, to take these. I would break this piece into the necessary layers to create that parallax for a camera that's kind of going going by on this shot. You know, following the guy here down the hill, um, or um, or other 3D work. Uh, is like I, I would do maybe we could do a video about that that'd be fun is um, blocking something out in 3d um, and then painting over it so that's definitely a fun process I like doing so no texturing no lighting um, just making cubes and spheres and getting a camera in there um, to get your perspective right and then using that as a basis for for your work and stuff so um, I have done that a lot um, or sometimes simple texturing too um, yeah, uh, I pref as far as my personal work goes, it's, it's fun to just paint. Um, but, uh, at least for me, um, but I, because these paintings can springboard, it's very quick to throw brush strokes down and try different options and different thumbnails and moves and things before going to 3d. Um, so yeah, there's so many different techniques and stuff. Um, yeah, it would be fun to see that process. So, um, I will definitely, definitely do one of those. That would be fun. Um, we'll do a, we'll do a 3d block out and paint over. Um, 
That'd be awesome. Yeah. So yeah, but it depends on the project, uh, the needs of the client too. Um, if you need something a little tighter, you might have to go 3D. You know what I mean? Um, it all depends. I was um, working on films for DreamWorks. We would actually have painters there that would either um, uh, start from photos and adjust them and then paint on top of them. Um, or there were artists who would uh, just rely on painting uh, alone. You know, they would pull up reference, but um, not use any photos to get the texture and stuff. And, um, um, and then there were artists that would use software like Vu or um, these terrain generators and, and cloud generators. Um, so like three different approaches, all to achieve the same kind of look because we're, we were all art directed and, uh, or production designed to, to get this, the style that, uh, for the film. So um, what I'm trying to say is there's, there's many ways to do things. Um, and it's really fun to see different people's approach and stuff. And because uh, there's not one way to skin a cat, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, that's pretty fun. But yeah, it'd be fun to to do some three D stuff. Okay. Sorry, I'm noodling this guy a little bit. Oh, uh -huh. yes. There we go. Make this asymmetrical. Got a bigger one over here. Someone said, I noticed that you have a lot of tool pr presets. Is it hard to maintain them? Yes. Um, I found the best way is once in a while. Um, uh, go through and pick out your favorites and maybe just add like an underscore or a space or um, something that throws them at the top of your list um, because you can get accumulate lots uh, from other people or from yourself um, and so but my favorites I just kind of put a little underscore or space and then they pop right to the top of that list um, uh, so that's kind of how I, I maintain that Yeah, you bet. Thanks for your question. And it's funny, once I once I did that and it had my favorites over here, I would actually pull up the brush menu less. Um, and it's funny because I, I just look for the words and know what each of these does. Um, so I could quickly get going. Um, but pulling this guy up because I haven't, I just haven't cleaned this up. Um, so it's the same kind of thing where there's just too many to, to deal with. And I have not cleaned this out. Um, probably should do that. Um, but what's fun is like, if there's a specific need, um, like I have all these cloud brushes, um, that I made, um, I've, I only need these two though, to do most of the work I, I ever do. Um, but there was times when I needed specific different kinds. Uh, for doing more cloud work and stuff. Um, so it's handy to have those guys in there. Um, or like when you need a little ping of light like that or stuff like that. So um, I guess that's how I stay organized is these days I just rely on, I've got some trees in here. Um, that's actually fun. Yeah, you know, I haven't been in there in a while because I just like... Uh, 
painting, you know, um, and kind of getting the impression of it because you can always add more detail and or photos to get what you need. Um, brushes help you absolutely, but um, as far as um, you know, hope that makes sense. <laughs> And it's funny, like you get used to a certain workflow and then you forget to do, you forget to do certain things like, you know, check out that you have a plant brush. Like this looks pretty cool and I haven't uh, used this guy in a while. So, you know, kind of funny how that happens. Let's actually clean this out. There we go. actually probably wrap this one up soon um, anyone ever tell you that you have a very Bob Rossish tone Rossish tone uh, I have gotten that before um, he is awesome and um, it's funny when you're when you're talking while painting like this I, I do get kind of uh, let's make some happy trees together and um, it's a relaxing kind of thing that's why I like it so this is this is pretty fun um, and if you guys keep enjoying it I'll, I'll keep doing it um, so yeah that's that's kind of where the tone comes from it's just uh, uh, I don't know it's a it's relaxing to paint and I enjoy it Oh, thanks for the follow. Um, and just a quick side note, um, I thought about making more elaborate tutorials or things like that and selling them. Um, which I'm not totally saying no to. It's just a matter of time right now, and I sure enjoy this live streaming stuff because it gives me a chance to interact with you guys. Um, and you can ask questions and stuff. So uh, if you know anybody that would would want to know more about painting in Photoshop, uh, I sure appreciate the uh, the share uh, and letting them know or or coming back for the next one. Um, these will remain free, free to watch, uh, live on Twitch here, or you can watch it later on YouTube. Um, and, uh, you know, you can find similar painting demos that are paid, very rightly so, um, by some amazing people. Uh, if you want to throw a little donation this way to help uh, help support me doing this, there's a link. Uh, there's a link there on um, on Twitch. But if you're not on Twitch, you can always go to metavisuals.live, and uh, that's kind of like the hub for uh, what I'm doing here. And um, oh, hopefully we won't get some feedback here. Okay, cool. It's muted. Um, but you can see when the upcoming broadcast is, which is kind of fun. Um, this is here in case you don't know how to get, to, get to Twitch, even though there's a, there's a link there, but, uh, when I go live, it'll show up on the main page here, which is pretty fun. And, uh, Hey, there I am. And, uh, 
once the broadcast is over, I'm going to make a calendar, calendar entry like this. And so you can click any of these and see what I did on March 7. This was yesterday. So you can watch this. Uh, it's a full YouTube video. This was yesterday's stream uh, where we painted these two images. Um, kind of inspired by Bob Ross. That's, that's kind of funny you brought it up. Um, and you can share these or uh, comment on it too, whatever you'd like. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm what I'm doing. So it's real clear when you when you if you want to know what, when the next one's coming up, uh, just hop to this page and you'll see the next time. I'll update this uh, later this afternoon with the next one. Um, but then of course you can you can donate uh, using PayPal uh, and Twitch alerts. And if you click that, um, you can throw a little donation this way, and it'll pop up on the on the stream. And uh, it's totally not necessary. Um, and, uh, but it's totally awesome to, to have your guys support and stuff. So, um, I can help do more tutorials and, and stuff like that, um, from that. So feel free to connect on Facebook, Twitter, you know, whatever you like to use. It's all pretty easy, but metavisuals.live, that's what this is. Um, just to make it a little bit clearer for you. And someone asked, can I request what to paint next? And you totally can. Um, but I'm going to wrap it up. So hopefully you show up for next time because that would be really fun uh, to get your guys' uh, recommendations and stuff for for what to paint. I will totally paint. Uh, do do like a day where we just, you know, you, th you guys throw out ideas and, and we see where it goes and, and have some fun. So, um, yeah, I hope you join me next time. That would be awesome. Uh, so, yeah, I think we're going to call it on this one. We started with... Uh, this photo here and we ended up with this little guy coming down to head towards this castle here um, and uh, so that was a fun one we could keep going with it or change the mood up but um, I think we're just gonna call it a day on that one um, and then the other one was this pretty hot sunset uh, city here, which we had fun throwing some photos together and stuff like that. So yeah, two different uh, color schemes and and stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, thanks so much, Mr. Puma Pants. Thank you so much, and thank you all for watching. This has been awesome, and um, yeah. I, uh, I hope to see you next time. Thanks for showing up and for following and stuff. And um, yeah, hope to see you next time. Thanks again, guys. See ya.